warning, some viewers may find this content disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. JJ, Squatch Man, yes. Always good to see you here in the Fox Den. This means once again, we are teaming up to figure out what is going on with the Dogman phenomenon here on Midnight Lycanthropy on Star Fox Radio. Yet please allow me to feed. Much better. Absolutely delicious. Now that I have been released from my shackles, it is time for JJ and myself to take a walk into the darkness. <laughs> <laughs> Creatures of the night, yes. Welcome back to another episode of Midnight Lycanthropy here on Star Fox Radio. We have JJ the Squatch Man once again rolling in the house. How you been doing, my friend? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for popping by again. We've both been extremely busy. I've been working the grave shift in regards of trying to get all my content back up and only 18 more videos to go so by the time everyone does hear this video i will be caught up and on to new stuff churning out but yes oh that's good news definitely this is factual my friends so what's new your way what have you been up to oh i i've been doing some busy work around my house and needs repairs and uh strangely enough while i'm working on my house I've been having some forest visitations. Um, they'll snap a branch. They'll make a loud tree knock or a noise. I'll look to see what the hell, what what did that, and uh, can't track it down. You know, they disappear as quickly as they appear. Yeah, so you're up here in the northeast like I am, which is super cool. I mean, I'm up in Maine, you're in Connecticut. It's really not that far of a difference. And do you live in a pretty remote area? Or I haven't spent the most time down in Connecticut. I did have an ex-girlfriend that went to Yukon down there. And she was from an area called Watertown. So I've had been aware of that type of area. And it looked like it was more of a rural type like town. But I don't know the most about Connecticut's landscape. I lived north of Watertown uh, towards the border of Massachusetts, and it's very wild. We have moose that come through. It's like uh, our terrain, our environment is much like Maine. State forests, very, very wild. So pretty much, yeah, definitely. I'm trying to, in my head, just get a picture. It's the, basically the landscape, but that's what I figured. I, for the most part, as in the northeast, unless an area is super colonized it's going to have that new england feel to it especially with the dense forest and i believe maine is the most forested state in the united states but i also believe the northeast might be either first or second with the most forested area because i think maybe the west coast might either be above that or equivalent oh yeah definitely uh you know ernie davio he's a friend of yes. mine who 
he had an encounter which was fairly close to where I live, just over the border in Massachusetts with a Sasquatch person. And uh, his encounter, we've been talking about the old Native American trail system and and the, the old Native American routes and the trading routes that, that went up through New England. And uh, there, there are very high incidents of sightings of cryptids and unusual uh, animals that people can't identify all through this area following the, the ancient Native American trail system. That is super interesting right there. And yeah, Ernie's the man. He's actually one of my bi-weekly hosts as well. And I believe he was the one that geared me in the direction to speak to you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So when it comes to like the Northeast in general, it's super old, meaning I believe it was one of the first areas that was colonized by I wouldn't say, yeah, sure, modern day civilization. So it's got that old folklore and just kind of dark history in general to it. And like you were saying with the old trading routes, you know, we have a ton of national parks up here. How do you feel about the theory of Dogman being involved with the people that are going missing in general, but definitely in the Northeast in the area of the national forests? You know, since sightings have been on a definite increase, uh, that's a definite possibility. I mean, and there could be a link. I don't think uh, Dave Pilates, who who's written a lot of books and such on the topic, has has made any uh, definite links to any definite cryptid or UFO or anything like that. It's all up in the air. But it's a strong possibility, definitely. There is some interesting stuff going on for sure. I don't think he does come out and directly say anything along the lines as to choosing more or less what is occurring. I think it might be more leaning towards extraterrestrial potentially because one of my friends is really big into his research as well as mine. And I had asked him before if Politis would be interested in collaborating or speaking just because I thought maybe he would have some input or like some potential input as to what's occurring in certain aspects of what the North American Dogman Project has documented. And he does great stuff, but pretty much likes to kind of play in his own mud puddle or sandbox, I guess. He doesn't like any sort of really outside information or really anyone to interject. So it's unfortunate but at the same time he's put out his research in regards but also there's a ton of other people that have done a great job like steve stockton among the missing and tales untold just documenting the missing people and that's really helped me a ton i actually did an episode with steve a little while ago a great guy and his research has really been a big platform as to how i can really try to align what's occurring within the North American Dogman Projects with our sightings along with like the missing people for sure. Wow. How intriguing is this, huh? How interesting. I mean, I I know there's a strong UFO link also with Maine. Uh, we have that incident near Baxter State Park. I, I wish I could uh, name these names. <laughs> you know that Laker Reservoir where we're a team of fishermen were abducted way back in like the 1980s. Whoa. No, like I said, I'm a dog man person. So that's pretty much. Oh, you, I... you haven't heard this. This is a very famous story. Oh, see, I, I should have had notes on this. <laughs> <laughs> Those Native American sounding lakes up near Baxter State Park. Um, and they called them the, the, the blankety blank seven, I believe. And they were abducted as a group, seven fishermen on a camping trip out there camping and fishing on the lake. They saw a light in the sky. They didn't know what it was when the fisherman thought, hey, I'm going to signal it with my flashlight. So he took out his flashlight and was turning it on and off as a signal to the mystery light. Apparently, the mystery light started coming towards him. And they made a quick paddle to the shore. You know, seven of these guys, I believe it was seven. Um, 
and then they had a severe period of missing time. And they all woke up in the morning. They were exhausted. They had mysterious marks on their body. Uh, apparently, there were experiments done on them. It was one of the first UFO stories I heard of where, where the uh, occupants of the UFOs were described as insect-like, like a praying mantis style. Just a wild, wild story. But what makes it very compelling? It was a large group of men all together that had the experience. Wow, that's super interesting because Maine, like I said, has a ton of forest. And since 1984, I believe there has been, it's mixed up between Sasquatch and Dogman sightings, but there has been over 285 sightings, like I said, of Dogman and Bigfoot all mixed in since 1984 up in the Northeast. And I know in Maine right now, Recently, there's been some activity up in Norway, which some members that kind of are more boots on the ground or hands on, whatever terminology people like to roll with, are going up to check out that area. And I know last summer there was a spot where a kid was, you know, abducted with a survivalist camping group so that's super intriguing and then you know in lisbon there was the encounter where the family was walking and they were attacked while walking their great dane and their daughter was almost pulled away by some sort of canine like creature and the mother was bit and all kinds of stuff happened there and then you got the infamous palmyra case and then around the time that the martin family was dealing with that you also have a group of teenagers that had nothing to do with the martin family that liked to explore and they were out with their girlfriend and a couple of their buddies and they were woken up by what they believe were large wolf-like creatures and then you have a woman that was driving home near the mountains in maine and she was basically almost ran off the road by what looked like a german shepherd like massive creature that was putting its face on the side of the car like snarling at her and then you have another case where a gentleman who liked to play guitar, his wife came in one time and he was looking out playing guitar and saw something go across the backyard. And she said he looked like he saw a ghost and he explained what he had seen. And then you have a game warden up here that reported seeing a dog man dispose of a black bear. And, you know, you have the group of friends that included Lee Buker, where all of them are still missing except for Lee and one of his other buddies and they were reportedly deceased by dogmen like creatures so yeah and that's just I'm sure I'm missing some up here in Maine for sure oh wow how terrifying is all that huh unbelievable <laughs> like I said and Actually, yeah, here's another one for you. A gentleman that went into a cemetery and decided he was going to start, you know, some weird chants and ended up seeing something that looked more of like a manifestation and large wolf prints and has had horrible luck ever since then. And that's another occurrence up here. And then you have a woman and her boyfriend near Bangor that saw what looked to be some strange dog like creature doing a military type like crawl across the street. And then you have another gentleman that was working at a factory late at night and saw what looked to be a werewolf jumping from big rig to big rig, you know, when they back them up and unload and load things into supply trucks. Yeah. And so that <laughs> then you have two girls that were up at Orono and in Umaine, and they like to go out to a river that was near the campus. There was a trail right there and they reported on a night where there was a full moon that they saw what looked like a crazy wolf looking creature watching them and then you have another woman that woke up in the middle of the night because she stays up late to watch tv had fallen asleep and when she woke up she realized that there was a massive wolf-like creature sitting on the neighbor's roof looking in at her and she went and woke her husband up and obviously it was gone by the time they got back and then you have another couple that were awoken by what seemed to be heavy breathing in a really remote area that they lived in where it sounded like something had ran for a very long time to get to where they were 
and it reeked of wet dog and just decay and it woke them up so yeah people don't realize there's that's just in maine and i mean the northeast is loaded with reports for sure oh wow you know when i, when I was a young child my family would love to go up to maine to camp uh one of our favorite spots was uh mount blue uh near webb if you know mount blue at all mm -hmm. uh, a very very scenic nice place i am so happy i was unaware of these type of encounters and stories <laughs> it would have <laughs> been a big crimp in, in our camping trips you know <laughs> i would have been on the lookout that that is really something oh i i was just looking on the net here i got a lot of my facts wrong with the alien abduction uh, they were called the allagash four it was the Allagash Waterway in Maine. And uh, they were four pretty, fishermen. Wow, pretty creepy stuff for sure. And I mean, yeah. like I said, I, I'm aware of outside of the dogman type topic. But to be quite honest with you, with how many people that are missing and how much stuff that I have that is related to dogman evidence, I just cannot focus on anything else besides the dogman topic until... I feel like I've been able to help bring credence to the topic and also get it in hands that can progress research past what I'm capable of. Meaning as a journalist, I feel like it's my responsibility or anyone's responsibility as a journalist. When you take on a topic, you need to see it through. You know, you don't just oh, yeah. stop halfway through. You go from start to end and meaning an end could be sooner than later or it could be very long time depending on what the circumstances are. And I just feel that there's so much credence pointing towards potential ancestors of extinct animals or living animals like spotted hyenas, baboons, et cetera, existing. And also, you know, the strange footprints, the missing people near cave systems and the sightings. And Maine is a hotspot. I mean, and hotspot is putting it lightly, isn't it? I mean, Maine is really active. It's extremely forested, and it's literally, yes, in an area where we are very aware of our, trying to protect our environment. And actually, as we're talking, and I'm just trying to dig through my brain some more, there's a couple more cases. There was a really old case of a man that was a respected mail delivery person and he was going through a forested area with his horses trying to deliver mail and his carrier was attacked by what looked like human-like wolf creatures and wow they ended up almost overturning the wagon but he got to the nearest area and they let him in through the gates so that's pretty terrifying. And then now fast forward, this is still also an older case, but there were people working the fields, the vegetable fields, potato fields, et cetera. And they, same thing, basically boycotted working because they all were seeing this strange or strange wolf-like creatures and they no longer wanted to work in the vegetable fields because of this. Unbelievable. In your experience, in your research, have you heard of uh, encounters like leaking down into uh, Vermont, New Hampshire, Massachusetts? Yes, if I could, I'll have to send it to you at some point in time because my book, I can't even remember the exact page because I've been so tenacious on trying to get my video content back up and just speaking to individuals such as yourself but last time i think i checked it was like 537 pages i have and wow if i if i went to all those areas you just spoke of yes i have encounters in all them and i could probably have maybe an hour's worth of a conversation just reading those off to you wow new england then the the whole northeast yeah from the shenango valley to upstate New York, to yes, Connecticut, New Hampshire, definitely Vermont, Maine. I mean, as I'm thinking about Vermont right here, there's a place called Cold Hollow, which is near a mountain range. And also it's a pretty isolated town. And I think they have to drive, I believe, 
the girl said an hour or so depending maybe more to get to the nearest area where there's any sort of nightclubs or you know nightlife etc because they have like a pizza joint in their area where you can obviously have you know some beer while it's open but it's like it closes at like eight at night or something and they don't have really any sort of activity but in this area of cold hollow same thing people have reported looming in the mountains and near this i wouldn't call it a village because we're talking about you know just a few years ago but it's a small town and people were losing pets and livestock and there was even reports of some of the locals themselves just disappearing off in the mountains and yeah again reported to see up in those areas dog-like or canine like wolf creatures and also there was native american lore that had special names for it that i can't remember off the top of my head but yeah so that was down in vermont wow how about that that is chilling right there i i know that the uh colonial traditions and the native american stories all through the area and how they date way back about all these cryptid creatures and um and and some French Canadian stories over the Canadian border, you know, I, I'm sure you're well acquainted with the Canadian lore. Yeah, we have. I would say again, I don't like to throw out numbers and dates unless I have them in front of me because I could obviously count all the encounters I have from Canada, etc. But I don't have my book in front of me, or because it's on my Chromebook and etc. Mm. I'm here having a conversation with you, and that's not really my priority at the moment to have that open. Yet in Canada, I would say, yeah, at least twenty plus encounters from you know around the area yukon territory and you know just all kinds of other smaller terrains and you know i'm not sure what they call them out there i mean here we call them counties and, and such but they're yeah all through those areas up in smaller rural parts and sure there's been a couple near larger cities just like here but it tends to be in spots where people are more isolated so there's there's a definite link there are Sasquatch sightings, of course, and there are UFO sightings. There are Dogman sightings. We we have quite the variety going on with the with the paranormal field, if you will. Uh, not to say that it's all supernatural, as you said, some of it could link back to a, a type of cryptid or cryptozoology that we're unaware of of what extinct canines may be around or who's to say you know 100 percent, and that's why i just try to tell people the whole canine term of like oh when someone says dog man people get this misconception that we're speaking about a hollywood werewolf we're not okay a canine description or something looking canine hyena bears baboons yet upon being looked at they would be described as canine-ish but at dna they are not a bear is yes bears and canines are closely related but they are not canines and same thing with baboons obviously they're you know primates and hyenas are related to mongoose and civets and weasels etc not canines or felines and also, same thing with dire wolves. Dire wolves aren't related to modern day canines either. Meaning, if someone right. was to get yeah dire wolf DNA, which a lot of people, including our environmentalists, believe that there are still dire wolves kicking around as well. Because recently there were some cattle that were taken, and when they found the remaining parts of it, there were teeth marks that literally dire wolf type teeth were fitting perfectly into the spots where the wounds were and again if someone was to get dire wolf dna it's not a canine it's not related to modern day canine but again it looks like a canine so i definitely wow. encourage people to just pump the brakes on thinking that it has to be canine that it has to be canine dna because it doesn't meaning if someone sees what looks like a baboon i encourage people to look up baboons they look like crazy raging werewolves okay and you're not going to get canine dna from that okay same thing with hyenas which we get type 3 reports all the time and again you're not going to get canine dna from that 
bottom line is you can't mix things unless they're genetically capable of being mixed okay meaning an elephant is related to a woolly mammoth in regards of very close to their dna so yes you can take the embryo like they're doing with a woolly mammoth and put it inside of the fetus of an elephant and you're in theory it's going to work okay sure because they're related to each other but you can't take a hyena okay and mate it with a canine nature doesn't work like that okay like Too when far you apart. yes yeah. when you have dog breeds yes they were all canine okay they didn't mix a tiger in with a canine to make a canine breed okay you can't right. do that so in theory the only way this would work meaning like what the nazis and stalin and everyone was trying to do if people were seeing genetically modified human-like wolf creatures the only way unless we're talking about the cynocephala that already existed but we're not talking about that we're talking about where people are saying oh there's a modified version okay i have seen videos unfortunately just by watching documentaries where the russians did some gnarly stuff and we all know what the nazis did oh, but the okay. russians that took is horrifying yeah the, yes I they took the head of a small dog okay and they put it on the body of a large dog and i'm not sure how long this thing lived but it was living still okay so basically what i'm trying to say is yes you cannot mate a male or female with any sort of animal and get an off breed of that unless <laughs> this animal had some sort of human dna in it but yeah. if in theory which i have heard that they did try this if you were to take the head off of a person okay and then put the head of a canine that had just been freshly removed on top sure i guess in theory if you were keeping the heart going and everything you might be able to do something like that okay you might be able to remove someone's arm and put a dog's arm on it or like a crazy baboon's type arm on it and it might work okay sure but that's not we're not talking about mating there okay we're wow. talking about still having your heart and organs intact but you're just swapping something out quickly okay so in theory sure that could work but 100 percent in not theory you cannot take an alligator and mate with a human being and get an alligator man okay it doesn't work like that <laughs> and, and people need to understand that <laughs> yeah i i often make that argument on facebook too that uh, people have this naive notion that you can somehow crossbreed a, a, a human and a canine or a human with a lizard. No, 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 no. That genetics won't allow it. You know, that you can't just do that. The, the genes have to be compatible. Yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> Take a spider and another spider. Okay, yes, now we're talking. Or right. a chicken <laughs> that is related to a T-Rex. Okay, yes, now we're talking again. Very similar DNA and genetic makeup. So I'm not saying that, okay? We know snakes and things, again, all very similar genetic makeups, okay? But bottom line is it just doesn't work like that. You don't go out and take a moth and mix it with a human being and get a moth person. It doesn't right, work like that. Right. <laughs> now, th this is a controversy now with the Sasquatch field about how human are they? Because you, you had the Melba Ketchum study where, where they got supposed human DNA and uh, an unknown pater paternal uh, DNA source from like 15,000 years ago. But even now, they're continuing to find human uh, branches off the hominid tree, if you will. Uh, you know, they... I'm not going to try to pronounce some of them. I'm very bad at pronouncing these things, but <laughs> you know, they they had the hobbits that they found. Um, yeah, the mini people even. in like uh, Indonesia and other areas like that. Yes, yes. yes. That we we have human branches. We have Neanderthal, which everyone Denisovians. Yeah. Yep. Denisovian, there's the one I was going to try to pronounce and decided not to. <laughs> and then you have Gigantopithecus as well. And yes, yeah, so it's funny you said that. The reason I can speak all those is just because I want to be able to sit down with people that are obviously an intellectual and make sure that I can pronunciate things well. So yes. there was a yes, there was a point in time I was struggling with all those words like Amphicino Day, Dinopithecus. 
<laughs> you know, Sano you Sakalai, got it. you got you know, it. Giganta Pithecus, like you were saying. So yeah, they're you all have been nailed. <laughs> yeah, all the scientific terms now. Uh, they're definitely like, what the Christmas trees is this that I'm trying to understand? <laughs> but basically, yes, I'm with you. I don't know the most about Sasquatch because, like I said, I don't really dive into it. I grew up, obviously, being informed about it, but I kind of really stopped paying attention once I felt like it was in good hands and that I knew I right. had answers that I felt like I needed as a child and I got them. But to be very honest with you, I think it could be maybe potentially a multitude of things before we let you go here. I think, A, yes, it could be some missing links in between human gene pools, meaning there are parts we're still kind of trying to plug in. I mean, there are, like you said, the Neanderthals and the Denisovians, which are different. You know, the Denisovians are built more like modern day kind of people, taller, skinnier. Neanderthals were shorter, more compact, like a yes. bodybuilder, etc. And yes, so obviously that means there are more ancestors throughout time that we are looking for missing pieces. So very much so it could fall into that, which could explain some of the human-like DNA that they found. Because, I mean, chimpanzees and things and primates have human-like DNA as well and look very similar like to us. But yeah, also three like percent difference, they say. 3%. That's what I'm saying. Yes. So yeah. I could see it falling into that category of a human relative, or I could also see it maybe potentially being some sort of relative of a giant ape or a giant ape, or sure, it could be maybe extraterrestrial based. I think there are things that fall in the line with all three of those, meaning. I do, again, encourage anyone like with the dog man or any other topic, don't just like close the door on something because like I just said, I mean, I'm a dog man guy, but the three theories that I just brought up about Sasquatch, there's credence for all three of those that oh, yeah. make a lot of sense for each one. There there could be connections between all three and, uh, and perhaps some dog men are uh, mutated Sasquatch. Mutations occur. You know, 100 uh, percent yes not not that they would necessarily mutate into canine like legs and tails and uh you know how at the moon but they might facially resemble more of a baboon look well, yeah we get the baboon werewolf yeah. reports all the time and that's yeah. why i was saying i believe the gugway is potentially the same thing as what we're seeing with the baboon dog men and also, just my theory of how baboons in general have been here in the United States. And like I said, to people that don't have a trained eye, if you wake up in the middle of the night or especially, say, someone that's younger or just anyone that's maybe elderly or just people that aren't familiarized with a baboon. I'm telling you right now, my nieces are very smart, but they're under five years old. If they were to wake up and hear something banging on their window, I mean... My three-year-old niece, okay, she understands when I have a mustache, when I do it for hockey season, just a troll, because I never wear facial hair, man, but I, I get a nasty <laughs> mustache be, for the Bruins, man, just because. It's funny. That's, that's what hockey people do. That's what we do. So she'll right. be like, Uncle Kenny, you, why do you have a mustache? Okay, so she understands, for example, enough that this is a mustache and what I'm doing it for. So more or less what I'm trying to explain is if she was to wake up in the middle of the night, okay, and see a baboon trying to open her window, or looking in at her window and putting its hands up there and showing its teeth and they have pointy ears and long snouts and glowing eyes because they have night vision which helps them survive versus leopards etc she would scream and say mommy daddy there's a monster looking in my window and maybe oh, yeah. even say a wolf or a wolf man or something yeah she would most definitely she would see it as a uh, monster that looks like a werewolf Yes, exactly. So that's just why I encourage people, again, just to kind of, you know, pump the brakes on things and just thinking that it has to be canine and laughing at people when they're researching it, because we're not talking about things that are out of a Hollywood movie here. We're actually talking right. about things that do exist and things that have prehistorically existed that fall into the category of what people are seeing. And Baboons are quadrupedal and bipedal, and they have hands, which could explain opening doors, windows, etc. All kinds of things. I've seen videos of them climbing into people's houses, opening fridges, oh, yeah. just being maniacs. Okay, and I've also seen them battling leopards and lions and crazy stuff. Okay, and they are beasts. <laughs> and more they or are. less, 
Yeah, <laughs> and we have footprints that resemble baboon-like footprints are here in the United States. Well, I encourage anyone to ask yourself, well, what are they doing here? Are people releasing them? Do they have private reservoirs? Did they come up on food ships in the past or present, um, et cetera? I don't know. Are they already always been here? Again, I don't know. Also, why are we finding footprints that look like hyena tracks that are very similar to looking like bears to the untrained eye? Again, we know there were North American hyenas, but they're supposed to have been extinct. And oh. also, where are the tracks here? So. Yeah, oh, very good questions. Um, there could be a wide variety of known animals that are where we don't expect them to be. Again, yes, we just as humans on a final parting note here, we just like to think that animals aren't hardy. OK, and animals are very adaptable. You know, like look at an animal outside that goes through winter and building its own nest and its food, et cetera, and comes out and survives. OK, human beings go to a grocery store. We have heaters. We have ACs, et cetera. Right. I mean, how many human beings? Yes, there's some out there that could do it. But how many human beings could go a whole winter with having to forage and find their own food, build their own tent, make sure that they had fire and all this and come out the next winter and still be in existence? It's not easy. Like if you watch uh, Les Stroud's Survivor Man, exactly. it's not easy, not easy. Exactly. <laughs> so like I said, you know, it's great to always get you to pop in, my friend, and pick your mind oh, and just have some good chats. Thank you for so. having me. <laughs> yeah, no, we'll definitely be continuing this. I'll see you again here in, you know, a few weeks and hopefully get some, like I said, of these videos cranking out soon, man. And I appreciate your time, my friend. Okay, I look forward to all your videos, all good stuff. Thank you for everyone who once again stopped by tonight for another episode of Midnight Lycanthropy here on Star Fox Radio. If you do enjoy my content, please like, subscribe, and share it. Feed the algorithm. And I will see you on the next one. <laughs>